to move on. Uh, we're going okay. back to okay. Thank you. You can stop share. Thank you very much. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna move back. Uh, we're going back to Cape Coast. Uh, so Peter, uh, Peter, and a bunch of friends. Um, so uh, okay, Peter, Peter, are you there? You can turn on your video and you can unmute. Yeah. Hello. Um, I, I, we, can you hear me, please? Yes. Okay. Yeah, good evening to everybody. Um, it was say we should do me from the University of Cape Coast, as has been already introduced. I'm presenting on uh, a technique that has helped us to safely discriminate cataractal lens from healthy lens tissue of uh, spragdoli rats. Um, so basically, these are my team members who help in the work. And then this is my outline for the presentation. Introduction, experimental method, and procedure. And then I'll talk about some results and then conclusions. Cataract, as we all know, is a major cause of visual disability worldwide globally. It's a major cause of visual disability, and it accounts for more than half of blindness in developing countries. And actually, it increases absorption and then significantly decreases vision over time. Now, cataract has been projected to increase globally due to increase in our aging population. Clinically, of during clinical uh, experiments, the gold standard of evaluating cataractal lens or discriminating cataractal lens from healthy lens is histopathology. So histopathology has been the gold standard of evaluating cataractal lens from healthy lenses. But this method has been found to be very, very, very subjective. Therefore, there's the need for us to go get an objective technique that is also non-destructive to be able to discriminate cataractal lenses from healthy lenses. And then laser-induced autofluorescence technique with its advantage of being rapid and highly sensitive has been found to be a technique that is widely used in the medical field. And then in the ocular, uh, in the optometry, ophthalmologic field, it has also been used widely for research. Researchers have used it to actually um, monitor the healing process of cornea. They've also used it so many times. And Mark Maslow and his team have also used this same technique to work on secondary cataracts. But interestingly, they use radiation in the ultraviolet region. But this radiation has also been found to cause cataracts. Long exposure of this radiation rather causes cataract. It's just another way of uh, by which cataract is also being formed. So it makes the usage of this radiation very unsafe for the technique. Therefore, we embark on an research to use other techniques, other light sources that can, which are safe, that can also be used to differentiate or discriminate cataract lens from healthy lens. So the objective of the work is to use laser-induced autofluorescence technique with a safer light source to discriminate the cataract lens from the healthy lens. So experimentally, 10-day-old uh, spragdol rats were used of either sex. They were put into groups, 45 per group. One group was actually uh, kept as a control, and the other group was created, the uh, cataract was actually created in another group. And then after the cataract was developed, uh, the lenses in the, the cataract lenses were actually removed and then it was inoculated and was saved for measurements. So this is the experimental setup, the laser-induced autofluorescence setup that was used to uh, acquire autofluorescence from the lens tissues of both the healthy lenses and the cataract of lenses. And it comprises of a laser source. Here, as I said earlier on, we use a safer light light source in the visible region. So 445 nanometer and then 405 nanometer light source was used, comprises of a microscope objective, a fiber port microprocessor, and a bifurcated fiber. And the detector system is a UV 2000 spectrometer. So in acquiring the autofluorescence uh, from, uh, from the lenses, the, lens, the lenses were put on the sample stage, and then autofluorescence was applied from each of the lenses. So this is a figure of uh, normalized mean autofluorescence spectra from both cataractal lens and that of the 
a healthy lens. And as you can see, it ranges, the fingerprints range from 450 nanometers to about 750 nanometers. And they realize that the autofluorescence from the cataractal lenses are higher compared to that of the uh, healthy lenses. Then employing principal component analysis, we were able to discriminate uh, the cataractal lenses from the, uh, from the healthy lenses. So here you could see that the red, the red with the, the cataract lenses and the blue is the healthy lenses. And we further classify new uh, cataract lenses using employing facial linear discriminant analysis. And employing it, we're also able to classify a new lens uh, as either being cataractos or a healthy lens. So in all, we are saying that uh, the laser induced autofluorescence technique has been able uh, has been used to discriminate cataract lenses from a healthy lens, and then uh, cataract lenses show higher uh, autofluorescence intensity than that of the healthy lens. And using principal component analysis, uh, three PCs were able to confirm the discrimination between the cataract lens and that of the healthy lenses. And then employing the facial linear discriminant analysis. We had 100% success in discriminating cataract lenses from the healthy lenses. So in all, the citation laser source in the visible region offer a safer uh, laser-induced autofluorescence technique to objectively distinguish and discriminate cataract lenses from the healthy lenses. These are some references, and then I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Peter. That was, that was great. Um, is this a low cost uh, system? Can it, is it small enough? Can you take it uh, to uh, remote areas if you wanted to apply this to people, not to rats? Yeah, um, the system is actually relatively low cost. Uh, as you said, it's, the, it's, it's relative, depending on who is actually um, buying the, or uh, actually putting the setup together. But in natural fact, apart from the spectrometer, which is actually uh, expensive, I think uh, it's mm. quite, quite low, relatively low, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Doesn't look like it. Okay, Th thanks a lot, Peter. Oh, wait, uh, Nicolette has got a question. Uh... Yeah, hello. Uh, very, hello. very nice work. Yeah, I, I have a question. It is a, a fluorescence spectrometer you use, or you just use the normal spectrometer and you have some filters to block the yeah. excitation? Uh, thank you for your question. We use the normal spectrometer, but we use the filter, high pass filter to block the excitation source. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. Thank you. Great. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot, Peter. Say hi to everybody. And uh, thank you. Thank you, George. <laughs> okay. So next up, uh, Henry. Henry, you around? <laughs>